Welcome everyone uh, to the Macy Catheter Facts and Questions webinar. Very uh, happy to have you all today. We are uh, going to be going through some of the common questions that we receive uh, from the different agencies that we support uh, across the country. Just as a side note, as we get started, this is not a Macy Catheter clinical training. This is simply just an opportunity to ask questions, and we'll be going through, again, some of the common questions that we receive from the agencies uh, that we support across the country. Again, my name is Morgan Goldsmith. I'm the Director of Clinical Services, and I'm joined today by my incredible colleague, Betsy King, who is a registered nurse, hospice educator, and one of our clinical account managers on the HOSPI team. Betsy, would you mind sharing a little bit about your background? Sure. So excited to be here with you all today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, any day I get to uh, share the Macy catheter with my colleagues in hospice is a great day for me. So I come from an acute care background in intensive care and then transitioned some years ago over to hospice. And I've had the privilege of working with Hospice Corporation since 2014 when they, when they first started. Wonderful. Thank you. And I joined the, the HOSPI team, uh, let's see, a little over almost three years ago. And my background, um, I'm a registered nurse, started in acute care, and then transitioned over to HOSPI in November of 2015. So very excited to be here and share this information with you. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first question, what is the story behind the Macy catheter? <laughs> Betsy, would you mind sharing that? Sure. Uh, the story behind the Macy catheter is a great story. For those of you that don't know, the Macy catheter was actually uh, invented by one of us, a hospice nurse uh, by the name of Brad Macy. And Brad had been practicing hospice and after hours care for nearly 20 years when he came upon this idea one evening when he was called to see a patient who was in uh, extreme terminal agitation. It was two in the morning. The patient could not take medications by mouth. Sublingual medications weren't touching his terminal agitation. So Brad called the physician and he got an order to place phenobarb tablets rectally, which he did. He gave him a pretty hefty dose. Uh, and after an hour when the patient's symptoms hadn't subsided at all, Brad went to repeat the dose and he found the tablets were still fully intact in his patient's rectal vault. So he knew it wouldn't do any good to repeat the dose uh, in that manner. So he just had the idea if he could get the medication in a liquid form and inject that into the rectal vault, then the medication would at least be absorbed and there'd be a chance that he could help his patient. And so that's what he did. He literally ground up the medicine, uh, mixed it with a little tap water, slipped a little tube in the, his patient's rectum and injected the medicine. His patient was sleeping in 20 minutes. So this was a huge aha moment for Brad, uh, who was a very seasoned hospice nurse at this point. And it's actually the beginning of what became the Macy catheter. He continued to use this intervention uh, for some time in his hospice, as did his colleagues out in San Francisco, and eventually uh, left private practice and founded the Macy catheter at Hospice Corporation and went through all the process to bring the Macy catheter to the market. It's been approved by the FDA and available actually since 2014, and now is in 35 states and has helped thousands, thousands of patients. So really excited. I love telling Brad's story. You can see on the uh, screen here, here's some of the uh, things that he has accomplished. He's so dedicated to, after, to ending end-of-life suffering and has several recent publications in the journals that we're um, citing here and we're happy to share with you as well. Our next question, uh, how does the Macy catheter help facilitate the absorption of medications in the rectum? Well, you know, I think we all know as hospice nurses especially that uh, rectal medication delivery is a very effective way to give medicines, especially at the end of life uh, once patients have lost the oral route. Um, this, this diagram here shows you exactly where the Macy catheter is situated once you place it in the, in the rectum. It's held in place by a, a small retention balloon above the rectal sphincter, and there's holes in the tip of the catheter, and that's where liquefied medicine is gonna actually come out and come in contact with the rectal mucosa. I know everyone knows that the, the rectal mucosa is very highly vascularized, and there's a lot of absorptive cells in the distal third of the rectum, but at the end of life, um, the rectal vault is very dry. Um, our patients are hypovolemic, they've not been drinking, uh, we're also giving them a lot of meds that, that dry up secretions. 
So placing, um, even, so even though it's a really great environment for absorbing medicines, if you place a, a tablet or a suppository in that environment, it can take a very long time for it to dissolve, get into a solution form that can actually be absorbed through the mucosa and get into the venous system. Conversely, giving it through the catheter in a liquid form allows it to be absorbed and get into the bloodstream very quickly, as well as missing the whole first pass through the liver. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the next uh, two questions that were submitted during registration are how long is the Macy catheter indicated to stay in place and what happens if a patient has a bowel movement and assuming um, of course that the, you know the Macy catheter is placed. Yeah great question. Um, the catheter is actually approved by the FDA to remain in place up to 28 days. So once the nurse places the catheter and inflates the balloon like you saw on the last slide they're actually going to attach the distal part of the catheter to the front of the patient's leg or thigh, uh, as you can see in the picture there, and that's where the uh, family or caregivers are gonna give the medicines. If the patient does defecate, um, it's the, the catheter has been designed to be pushed out very easily with a bowel movement. So if the patient does have a bowel movement, it'll simply push the catheter out. If this happens, you simply wipe it off with a wet rag, deflate the balloon, and reinsert. Uh, that sounds a little ooh, at first because we're used to sterile environments and Foley catheters, but uh, completely fine to reinsert the catheter, and it can be done by a trained caregiver as well if your facility allows it. Um, just a couple things while we're on it. Um, the catheter does have to be uh, ordered by a physician or a nurse practitioner, and originally you do have to have it placed by a nurse, an LPN or an RN. Uh, it, obviously, it's a really quick non-sterile procedure to put it in. Uh, and it is latex free, it's made out of silicone, so you don't have to worry about those types of allergies as well. Great, thanks Betsy. Mm -hmm. How big is the Macy catheter and is it comfortable? And I know this is a question that we get all the time with the time. Uh, regard to how comfortable is it? Yeah. Well, this here's a picture of the catheter and as you can see from the, from the, the, the picture, it looks a lot like a Foley catheter. But there's just, and I already told you it's silicone, uh, there's only one size. It's a 14 French, it's 20 inches long, it's very soft and flexible, and miraculously, it does fit everybody. I'll just show you a picture of it in my hands here so you can get an idea of the scope of how small it really is. And it's a very soft balloon. Um, actually, once the catheter's inserted and the balloon's inflated, the patient doesn't have any sensation of the catheter being in place, so it's very comfortable. We've had hundreds of awake, alert, ambulatory patients use the catheter with no get difficulty at all. Just w point out real quick while we're on this slide, Morgan, uh, the, the parts of the catheter for everyone. Um, the, the medicines are actually injected into this port that's clearly marked medicines <laughs> with an oral tip syringe. Uh, the next port is a balloon inflation port, and that's exactly like a balloon inflation port on a Foley catheter. That's where you're going to attach a lure lock syringe and inflate the balloon once you've placed the catheter in the patient's rectal vault. Then you'll see some placement marker lines on the shaft of the catheter. There's two triangles with a line in between it. Those are just there to assist you to know how far to insert the catheter before you blow up the balloon. And then the balloon is inflated uh, with just 15 milliliters of room temperature tap water. Again, it's very soft, very small and pliable. And at the tip of the catheter, there's four holes where the medication is going to come out and be distilled into the rectum. Great. Mm -hmm. What types of patients uh, benefit from the Macy catheter? Mm, good question. Um, you know, I think we already mentioned that, um, you know, the majority of our patients don't need the Macy catheter, thank goodness. You know, most of our patients, as they transition and they lose their oral route, uh, we'll switch them over to sublinguals. And, you know, for the majority of the, our, our patients, we can keep them comfortable. The family can handle administering medications and they can transition in the environment of their choice. But of course, we there is a small percent of patients in all of our practices that that's not the case. When their oral route is compromised, either because of dysphagia or a primary condition or um, they can't cooperate with oral administration and the sublingual route is not working, 
the Macy catheter is your next go-to. You can treat all the conditions that you see on the slide here. Terminal agitation, obviously the condition Brad was actually trying to get under control when he came up with this idea. Any patient whose pain is not well controlled, obviously if patients are nauseated and vomiting, um, seizures, anti-convulsants can be um, given through the catheter very effectively. It's great for dyspnea. Um, Lasix is well absorbed rectally, so if you have a patient in pulmonary uh, edema, you can give them some Lasix and um, morphine and get them under control. And then, of course, terminal fever. Antipyretics can also be given this way. Basically, all of the symptoms that we try to uh, treat to keep our patients comfortable at the end of life can be treated with medications given through the catheter once they've lost their oral route. Uh, and we, this is a very, very common question, <laughs> both when we're, you know, training uh, live via webinar um, or, you know, just that we receive throughout uh, different validation periods. So when should I introduce the Macy catheter into a patient's plan of care? There's no wrong time. Uh, um, optimally, uh, proactively would be the best time. Um, you know, any, well, we know the signs. We know as our, that our patients are transitioning and we know what the, prog what the progression is gonna be. So I, I think it's, it's best, if possible, to introduce it as soon as you see that the oral route is beginning to become compromised. For a couple of reasons, to give the family uh, um, a feeling of security that there's gonna be a way to give them medicines and keep them comfortable once they can't swallow anymore, as they see they're becoming less and less responsive. Uh, and just also so that you aren't dealing with a crisis situation, uh, which would be obviously the other time. If your patient, you know, if you're the on-call nurse or you're the after-hours nurse and you get a call and you have a patient who's in crisis, um, obviously, you know, you're gonna need to have the kit with you. And when you go to the home, and you've got a patient whose symptoms aren't well controlled with no oral route and no other alternative, um, that's obviously a very good time to introduce the, uh, the catheter. Um, one thing that we did um, a year or so ago to help actually you as clinicians introduce the catheter into patients' care and explain the intervention to families, caregivers, and patients was create this a new tool, which is a caregiver video that you can see on the slide here. And this is about a three or four minute video. It features a nurse actually in a home care setting, explaining the Macy catheter to a family member and a patient, shows them the catheter, explains how it works, why it works, and shows how to give medications through it. It answers most all important questions that families have. And you can access this um, video directly on our website under the clinical corner tab of macycatheter.com. Great. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, the only thing I think just listening to that I would add is that we have many agencies that end up putting this particular video as an aid on their learning management mm -hmm. systems. Uh, so it's something that the clinicians are able to download on their tablet or their laptop so you don't have to worry about internet connection. Of course, it's available uh, 24 seven on our website, but uh, just like the, this video, as well as all of our additional trainings, um, you can download those and then uh, upload, upload them, excuse me, to your LMS. We're happy to help you with that process if anyone has uh, any questions uh, or needs any assistance with, assistance with that. Okay, so the next question um, is actually in regard to the injectable opioid shortage. And our IPU is experiencing the effects of the injectable opioid shortage. Can the Macy catheter be used to give pain medication? And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, we have had numerous agencies reach out to us across the country with regard to the current shortage uh, that many of the agencies are feeling, some more than others. Uh, on this particular slide, put an example of a recent press release that you can find um, on our website talking about the impact of the shortage, and then also um, our experience with Hospice of Dayton, which is part of Ohio's hospice in the Midwest. Uh, very long story short, uh, Dr. Schmitz reached out to us in November of 2015. Uh, their organization was feeling the effects of the shortage, and they were in crisis mode, and they needed a, a quick 
solution to be able to deliver medication so there wasn't any interruption in care for their patients. Uh, and they implemented the Macy catheter into their protocol very quickly, and they used it as a first-line alternative to give medications uh, at end of life when patients had lost the ability to swallow. And it's been a very effective solution and intervention for their organization. Uh, encourage you, if you have specific questions, if your agency is experiencing the shortage, please feel free to reach out to us following this email. There uh, will be a follow-up with all of my contact information, and we'll also be uh, putting this particular webinar on our website, and it'll be available next week if you need any additional information or would like to view uh, this information again. One of, I'll segue, one of the nurses um, on the call asked the question, can the catheter, this segues into the same topic, can the catheter be used effectively to replace sub-Q administration given the opioid shortage? And the answer is absolutely yes. So again, if you have questions, this is a great solution and alternative to give medications to uh, ensure that there isn't any interruption uh, in the patient's care. Betsy, anything that you would add? No, I think you covered it all. And then the last question, um, if I have a question, what is the best way to get a hold of the Macy catheter team? Here is all of our contact information. Uh, I would say if you're looking for general resources, please visit our website. Um, we're really excited to share our, our new website, macycatheter.com. If you go over to Clinical Corner, there are a lot of training resources from not only our product sheets, but all of our current publications that you can actually access and then download, in addition to all of our webinars, which we record, and then our training videos from insertion of the catheter to how to use our liquid pill to an example of what our clinical training is. So our goal is to provide uh, a resource for every need that you may have as an agency. Uh, we also have some additional resources available. So if you're interested in learning more about how you could incorporate the Macy catheter into your agency's policy or procedure, um, you know, reach out to us and we'll be happy to, to help you with that process. Again, here's the uh, email information. You'll also receive my email uh, following this um, webinar with my contact info. Um, just a phone call or email away, so call anytime. And then this is our 24-hour phone consulting line. Uh, the, if you call this line, which we receive calls 24 hours a day, you will either speak to Betsy, myself, or you may get Brad. Um, and we're the, the three RNs on the team, and we're happy to answer any questions, especially if um, you are working with a patient in the middle of the night, first time you've utilized the catheter, and just want to make sure that you have everything uh, that you need. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining us today. Betsy, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And I know many of you have worked directly with Betsy um, and have had an opportunity to speak with her on the phone, or if you're even more fortunate, meet her in person. And it's always an honor to be able to work together. Um, huge, huge. Uh, wealth of information and incredible team members. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, guys.